so you guys got a location. I believe she lives in Auburn. That is a uh, is a crappy apartment. Basically, low love lifestyle on like the fourth floor. Um, and you have a time of let's say, let's say probably about four thirty in the afternoon. It seems like a good time for somebody to wake up for the first time of the day. So it's just at your house? Yep. That's the meeting spot. Okay. Uh, so, in classic Shadowrun style, I'm just going to ask... Actually, it probably doesn't really matter, seeing as it's not like... Uh, it's not like there's a Johnson who's going to be angry at you for being late or anything. So, I'm going to assume that you're all uh, able to get there on time without offending anyone. Um, only thing I'm going to ask is that if you have any <clears throat> roles to do before the meet... Or, you know, addictions you need to roll, or uh, special equipment you're bringing. Not sure why you would, but uh, just just detail that. But otherwise, I'm pretty much going to assume you all get there on time. Unless anyone has a problem with that and they want to uh, do something crazy and special, like airdrop into the meat or dig a tunnel or something, pop up from underground. You know, Cotton does have a plane. He could parachute into the... <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> That's how I, that's how I go out to uh, you know get lunch. I just I just airdrop into like a you know a backpack house. You can Grand Theft Auto Four picking up your girlfriend with a helicopter? Yeah, <laughs> which lands in my air carrier. So okay, I see some ooh, some secret rolls being made. Uh, uh -oh. I'm going to assume that if nobody's rolling. Uh, anything else that there's nothing to roll uh, so do you want to describe what? Cass's house for me it is on the outside just one of those low rent income housing uh, stick as many people in a vertical spot as you can and uh, the kind of landlord who doesn't really care so long as your rent is paid Mm -hmm. So the place is not exactly a clean or uh, well-appointed place, I guess. The kind of place that probably many of you have stayed in as professional criminals that needed a place to crash. Um, her, the, the actual room is probably on about the fourth floor, and it's just unassuming from the outside. And more secret roles are happening, I'm sure. Uh, well, it sounds good to me. Um, I'll pretty much let you guys uh, handle how you want to roleplay this. Uh, who wants to show up first and uh, who wants to take the initiative, knock on a door. It's entirely in your court. Okay. <sighs> well, since so Castle's calling me, I'm going to guess it's not, you know, a setup or anything. I, I, I don't see cost or criminal mastermind being a thing. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to kind of rankle being in a poor part of town. But I'll probably uh, drive up, circle the block, take a look around, see what I can see. And if that was it, I'd probably, you know, go inside. Inside the building or inside to her apartment? Inside the, well, the building. I, I presume she told me where to go in the building. Yeah, it's probably like room 405 or something like that. Fourth floor, fifth apartment. Shway. Okay, but yeah, I will... Again, I'm, I'm pretty rusty. I don't know if I should make a perception check, but yeah, I'll I'll do one of those. Sure. Makes us feel better. Why not? Let's just I mean, the question is, does it make you feel better? D6, There we go. Do I see anything cool, interesting, threatening, or, you know... Uh... You will notice that on her, like as you come up to her, uh, her door, you don't hear any of the sounds of civilization. There's no trid set playing. There's no uh, soy calf machine going on. It is kind of empty, except for like the soft padding of somebody barefoot walking around. Um, there are probably an argument or two from one of the other rooms as you went by of the wonderful neighbors that you have in a place like this. Um, nothing super okay. exciting unless you had questions and I would be happy to answer. 
Well, we're just standard lower in apartment. Fair enough. I will uh, head up to the uh, apartment given to me, 405 or 404, whatever it was. <laughs> 404, hard to find that apartment, by the way. I like it. That has become her apartment now. <laughs> okay. So, yes, you pass by a few suspect stains, I'm sure. Uh, the place has probably fallen apart a little bit in the style of uh, a horrible dystopia where nobody's accountable for anything. Um, but, yes, you arrive at the door, presumably... Cassa, you hear a knock. If she does, she will answer the door. She is wearing a heavy bathrobe and just kind of nods slowly, recognizing Cotton and uh, beckons him inside. <sighs> I'm gonna wrinkle. I will. I will wrinkle a little bit at the poverty, but I will maintain and uh, and enter this abode. Oh, hey, the Cousin. poverty is just starting. <laughs> Um, so inside the actual apartment, there is, like in the living room, there's basically nothing in here. It's a large empty room, no furniture, a pile of clothes in the one corner, and, uh, that's really about it. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <sighs> okay, I guess I will find the cleanest surface and attempt to make a seat out of it. I mean, it's not, like, covered in trash and garbage, but if there's no uh, creature comforts. Okay. Do you have a chair? Uh, she will. What? One second, and then she will go off into the other room and pull back a chair. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we're waiting for everybody else. She'll nod. All right. I didn't think it was a solo visit. That's not my luck, I guess. Oh well. That's a joke. You can laugh. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying that in character, by the way. <laughs> I, Rob was re- forgetting that he put didn't put up a uh, a runner hub stream link, so he kind of spaced out on what you said. I see. Okay, uh, who wants to to show up? Uh, bearing in mind, if you want to just show up and be there for the meet, uh, you can. You'll see the same stuff that that Cotton sees. Nothing's going to change in the next five minutes or so. Yeah, um, I'll just have Oju's come in just to keep poor Cotton from feeling too left on his own. Yep. That'd be mean. <laughs> Curtis will be showing up around the same time. He'll be wearing his people legs because it's kind of a public place. Um, lined coat, guitar on his back, minimal face paint, keeping pretty much... A, as low a profile as he keeps outside of a full on job. Okay. Sigurd uh, uh, will be showing up about five minutes early, however, early that is in relation to everyone else uh, or late. Um, and will be wearing his. Um, his Argentum coat and will be uh, doing a thing that I'm going to PM to you. <gasps> so many secrets. Oh god. They never trained me for this in GM school. Wait, they did. Specifically. Did he just play Mysterious Challenger? Maybe. I'll say. Oh my god. Got like three <laughs> secrets PM to me. This is amazing. I kind of want to just spam him with like, this is a secret that I'm whispering. If, if I attack him, will someone come out of nowhere and you'll get down? I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> like if somebody goes to attack him, will someone come out of nowhere and you'll get down? It's, it's a harsh word. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm taking into account uh, all of, all of uh, the things. Your rolls. Um, no, but Stardust will just walk through the door. I mean, you just straight up juggernauting through the door, or are you going to knock? Well, I'll knock. Yep. You will be, uh, have the door answered by a, a woman wearing a bathrobe, who is albino. Stardust will shrug and come in. You will find that the singular chair that is owned is uh is sat in already. 
He'll find himself a wall to lean against. I imagine Ogi is doing similar. Um, he's taking. Uh, he's getting a spot. He's taking it easy. With a nod and a polite walking in. So tempting to do the Kramer walk in, slam the door open, and go straight to the fridge. But no. Being professional. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to keep it muted. Then if the last person walks in, since he was doing yep. stuff that uh, that was secret stuff, so Casa will uh, will close the door and then just kind of stand there for a moment, looking really awkward. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, uh, Sigurd will probably um find a nice spot to sit down on the floor on. Yep. Despite being an already short dwarf. Gotta get down lower. Yeah. Uh, is, is this Cass's magical lodge? She does not have a lodge. Okay. Cool. Just checking. Yep. She has no lodge, no wards, no nothing. Um... She would have probably summoned up just the spirit to be on the the around. I guess I could roll that out real quick. Oh, okay. Just because it's you like want... if you if if you don't if you want to knock yourself out, she might force four. You say? Yeah, she must uh, maintain a dominant role over the her subservient spirits. Okay, too drained to resist, and you go ahead and get your force for plant spirit to lurk about. Yeah. Um, so she will uh, struggle for a moment with finding words, and then it'll just kind of be like a blurt out a, I need your help. I have uh, come to Seattle looking for something that was taken from me and I have found a lead on where it is and I have gathered many Nuyans with which I hope to get you to help me get them back oh you have actual money I have to say that's a nice change of pace <laughs> she's just going to kind of slow nod at, at Cotton of course. <laughs> I don't know. I'm used to getting paid for my work. <sighs> what is it that's been taken from you? What are we? What are we recovering? She's gonna struggle with it for another minute or two. It's not just recovering. I also want revenge. They, my child. All right. Who took them? Poachers. Where are they? Where do they live? The two that I know of, the ones that paid money for them, one lives in London, and one lives here in Seattle. And my assumption is we are going to take care of the one in London, then, correct? It is the the farthest one. It is the one I would have the most help with. Do you have the capacity to get us there with equipment? Uh, she's going to kind of look around the room a little bit and then kind of look at Cotton. Cool. I think I might know someone who can help with that. <sighs> All right. Do we have any awareness of what London has restrictions with weaponry, with magical abilities, any of those sort of things? probably rolls a bunch of matrix searches to figure that out. Because she is going to shake her head. I'm not well versed in even this area. Right. So we'll have to do some research on London and figuring out 
you know, the rules of the road over there. How they get in, how they get out, how they operate. Um, do you have any other information about, you know, who these poachers are? You know, what their ch- what the child looks like, a picture or anything like that? Uh, give me one second. If I double check the AAR from a while ago and see if I have the... You're looking for the guy's name? Yeah, I don't remember. If, I if you it. have one, uh, then I've changed it. Okay. Um, well, uh, she would have the, that name, so... Yeah, the name is Sir Sebastian Shaw, Baronet. Can you spell that out? Yes. Thank you. This is the poacher's name. Is that what, what it was? This is the name of the person in London who currently has one of her children. When you say Baronet, is that a last name or a title? It's a title. Ah, it's see, part I'm... of being an anointed, uh, an anointed knight. I am but a silly American. We do not have these titles. I mean, so I wish I had titles. Uh, yes, OG. It is OG, right? Not OG. Yeah, OG. Yep, you get it right. Okay. Will remembers. It's like the gangster, he's OG. That's exactly why I remember it. Um, so, uh, yeah, OG and <clears throat> Stardust both do some roles. Uh, and you, you guys pretty much come up with the same information because uh, it's this is like incredibly public. Um, the UK in the sixth world well, as well as modern day, is incredibly restrictive in what you can have on you. Um, You can't carry around weapons. You can have licenses for them, but, like, if you you actually have them in London, uh, you're going to get fined or put in jail. Um, Obviously, this escalates if you uh, have an intent to use it on someone um and if you actually use it obviously you just go to prison for a long long time um obviously things like pistols and rifles those are going to get you in trouble things like automatic weapons heavy weapons explosives uh they're gonna get you in prison pretty fast um things like blades um so small bladed weapons large bladed weapons blunt weapons and projectile weapons, so I imagine that means like bows and stuff like that. Uh, you're not going to get in trouble for possessing them, though they'll probably get confiscated if someone sees you just walking around with it. Um, but you'll obviously still get in trouble if you threaten someone with one. Um, but you won't get fined just for having one on you. Um, it's also worth noting that drugs are pretty restricted over there, um, officially. Uh, you can just about get away with having uh, drugs that are licensed from other countries. So there are some things that are deemed restricted in the UK, for example, um, that really aren't legal uh, in the UK. But like you'll that you'll just about go get along with 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 having one without getting arrested. Um, stuff like non-addictive substances, especially, are not so bad, but Controlled substances, yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get in trouble. Um, cyberware that isn't licensed is also a problem, um, as well as uh, Dex, you know, Matrix stuff. Um, that will that will also all of that cyberware, Matrix, uh, Dex, and software. Um, if you if it's threatening enough and you don't have a license for it, uh, you will get fines from 25,000 pounds and up uh, can go as high as 60,000 or two years in prison. Um, Obviously, this escalates immensely if you're seen selling or buying any of this stuff. It increases to about 10 times the the penalty. Um, But I'm sure that will... uh... Exactly, England is is, is no fun in the future. the other uh, issue is um, yeah. that occurs to me is that if 
assuming we're crossing illegally into the country, um, we won't have valid sins that, like, ed say we belong in London. I assume you need, like, a passport to enter. You can get a, uh, a visa that can tie you over, basically. You know, like a travel visa that uh, you can head over there and you'll, you'll be all right with that. So, like, a f I assume mechanically that'd be handled like a fake license. Yes. And it has record, and with that, it comes records. There come records of us passing legally into the country, even if we didn't. Um, yeah, with whatever sin you want to attach it to, basically. Bearing in okay. mind that traveling, you probably want a high sin, because uh, um, I, I'm assuming you're going to be traveling uh, with Cotton's Plane, rather than... Um, you know, fire an airline. Um, the security on that is slightly more lax because you're not in danger of, you know, blowing up uh, one of their planes, but they still are going to be worried about you coming into the country. So you still need to go through, you know, a check, a sin check once you get off the plane. Um, That's assuming they know we've landed. I'm planning on... I would ideally like to fly under the radar and get into the country without knowing then have a sin that says we get traveled in legally but that would be to the pilot if that's something he can do that's interesting it's all that should be kept in mind as we as we add everything together and, and see what kind of contacts we can get a hold of exactly. if we can get access to some kind of docs or something i mean we can we can bypass a lot of bullshit It's certainly a possibility. Um, getting to uh, getting to London, um, you could you could fly uh, to the UK and go to London by train, for example, um, would would definitely be an option. Right. The the, the, the obvious downside is to if we if we were to find somewhere to be to find an illicit place to hide a plane, it's going to be pretty far from London. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so you you can't just roll up and I I'm a guess I'm never been to London. I'm guessing it's a fairly busy port. You can't just have a plane, you know, come up out of the water like hi guys. Well, <laughs> you probably cool? actually you'd be surprised. You can uh, um you can book um flight plans uh, fairly easily, um and they'll direct you to uh what is called I think I forget exactly what it's called, but I think it's like uh an FBO like a I don't know. A uh, fixed base operator, I think, something like that, which is uh, the sort of place they have for their non-commercial flights, where you can just go in, and it's it's for people who are flying privately. Uh, they assume if you're flying privately that you have some measure of esteem. Um, most criminals don't traditionally have their own planes, uh, so it's kind of, in terms of flying under the radar. Um, metaphorically if you have your own plane you kind of automatically are above a lot of suspicion um but obviously you're still gonna there's still gonna be records if you fly uh through legal means okay well that's to be kept we'll, we'll, we'll keep all that in mind you know i think that's some little you know a, a, a bridge we can cross in a little while we, we just need all the details right now um casa do you have a picture or at least a description of your child. She's gonna look a little awkward. Like I do not, but he is like me, and she's gonna look for a hint of confusion if people have right. It. Of course. So, like, all right. It's like you in in what manner? She's going to uh, kind of sag her shoulders a little bit and then step back away from people and in a singular motion drop her robe and turn into a mountain lion. <laughs> I think Kyle's seen this, right? Have I seen this? Not that I know of. Yeah, but... <laughs> Oh fuck! I'm the only one sitting down too. We'll just be farthest from escape. Uh, <laughs> like, 
gonna. What, what does the mountain lion do? It just kind of <laughs> sits there, like on its haunches, just... and just kind of sits there for a minute. Okay, so that's new. That's interesting. I always knew Seattle was a weird town. I should have just stayed in Missouri. <laughs> so <laughs> some people blink, some people start taking drugs. Um, yeah, there's yeah people people are looking varying degrees of confused and accepting. It seems. Yep. So seeing this, she will uh, pick up her bathrobe in her mouth, drag it off into the other room. And then come back out wearing it again as a person. Do the, you know, eyes downcast, pushes hair behind her ear, and just kind of looks awkward. Well, that explains a lot. Ooh, ooh, mm. boy, <laughs> that that explains that, a lot. <laughs> that is fascinating. I look, I look at whoever just said that explains a lot, man, and, and ask them, well, do, you, do you feel like you know more or less now that that's happened? I feel like I've gained certain, more ignorance. I'm, I'm certainly more intrigued, but it makes a little more sense why uh, poachers are involved. Well, fair enough. Than human traffickers. I just thought it was her struggling with language. I said now that I was wrong. <sighs> okay. Okay, cat person. Kidnapping. Where's guy? Okay, I'm with this. I'm with you all. I get it. He does not need to be kidnapped. I merely... want to show him the error of his ways as the laws of nature kind of dictate. What? what uh, we need you to be very, very specific, Kaza. She's going to kind of stand as like, I intend to rip his throat out with my jaws. Oh, so are you going with us? Yes. Aha! That'll facilitate that, that, well, that's, that'll make that easier, because I don't, uh, you know, I just had the plane detailed, so that would not be amenable to that in the plane. So, okay. Very, very interesting. Uh, you have the plane? I thought you said what? you knew a guy. I do know a guy. I know myself very well. <laughs> Fascinating. Um, this will make for a most interesting uh, ordeal. Oh. Does plane have a sat link? Let me see. On my list of cool shit. Uh, unfortunately, no. The sat link did not make it into the plane. Oh, I know why it's not in the plane. Yeah, I, I, I don't really want to have anything in the plane that makes those who are uh, particularly adept at computers uh, instructing the plane on what to do. Like, you know, crash in the ocean, explode, fly into the sun. That type of thing. I mean, you're, we leave? your plane's pretty awesome. I don't know if it could fly into the sun, though. No, they may figure, you know, I don't know, fly into a building and, you know, put me in the 9 o'clock news. <sighs> I just have a certain paranoia over, you know. It seems less nine o'clock and more like breaking story. Yeah, breaking story. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they might interrupt your the the uh, the trade videos. To put that one in there. Either way, I don't intend for it to happen. So no, there is no satellite. You have to figure something out. Our wheels going out. Do what? Are we leaving? I would figure quite soon. <sighs> I do not know. Are you in a hurry? As much hurry as a mother can be to reclaim her child. Well, not no. you as a stardust. I'm sorry. I just need to no. know how much time I've got to start with matrix searches. Indeed, and not, to be, and not to be too mercenary, we do need to understand what the sort of payment is being involved here. This is certainly a noble thing to be done. But... If we do something for free, 
over time, that can be a problem eventually. I still need to eat food at some point. Yeah. So she will she will nod. I have collected some Nuyen throughout working with some of you. I prepared to offer half of what I have. She has goes into the other room and pulls out a, a bag and comes back in and kinda dumps it onto the floor. Pile of different types of cred sticks. That is about forty thousand new yen. Well I think we can all safely assume that uh, <laughs> that's about what we've got. Forty thousand sounds about right. <sighs> what do y'all what do y'all say? Forty thousand to rescue somebody and to obtain this man so she can get her vengeance. I'm fine with this. I I find this agreeable. Mm. Of course, there will be you know a donation to uh, the plane fund. JP eight isn't cheap. JP eight <laughs> jet fuel. So, that is something for us to do here. Um, we should then discuss exactly how and what we want to do with this here. If you wish to do the killing there, which may be the simplest thing to do, because trying to extract two people, one unwilling, would be quite difficult. I will say, though, any sort of killing that's done, I would like for it to be done in a proper fashion. I expect, Casa, that... Your victim will be very aware of who you are and what you're doing to him, without any doubt. Uh, otherwise, what is the point of your vengeance? But it's a question of who else we may end up dealing with, obviously. Uh, I may yes. also suspect, as he purchased my child at an illegal auction, that he may have other... And she'll struggle for the word for a moment. Interesting creatures there. Under similar situations. Well, you don't buy something that big without leaving um, some kind of data trail. I'll get looking on it um, as soon as I get some time to check out. And she probably has a copy of the information from the auction that she could hand over. Certainly. I assume I assume you have some info on the guy. Uh, but yes, any any questions you want to ask, I'll be happy to see if they're answerable. This so she's handing over what a data file on an auction? From an auction? Or what? So there was a, uh, a a duo run that Poet and I did where we broke up a illegal animal auction, which is where she got the first of her cubs back, and that's where she got the name and location of the other two. And this was a physical auction or something handled over the Matrix? Physical. Okay. You're not going to find any lava soap over here. What? Well, like in the city of Seattle? I mean, like, like um, I mean, in the room. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to come in handy. Just trust me. Okay. Okay, so we've negotiated a price on some money, and we need to figure out a way to get over there, find this guy, deal with him, find the child, well, bring him back. Let us do some research on him right now while we prepare the travel time. We can Absolutely. give our, our Decker time to get information so we know what we need to obtain here before we go there. 
I fully agree. Um, do we want to start making our way uh, to a particular hangar while he's doing searches, and we can uh, get organized? Or do y'all need to go pick up some, uh, pick up a few things from your various houses? And the question is: Do you have the ability to smuggle things in so that if we are detained, that it's going to be something going to be very hard for them to see? Yeah. Try and time it so we're coming into London by night. So. Like, well, maybe not now. I, I'm, I'm going to say we should default to whatever the lovely, lovely knowledge skill exists because that's a handy thing to have, which, as I remember, Cotton does have a handful of. So, well, the, the, I'll, I'll say this: we cannot bring, you know, the plane itself is 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 not made to have a lot. Of, does not have a lot of, like smuggling compartments, is what you're probably asking about. I'm familiar with these and. If he runs, so it doesn't have those. If we go in in a straight, normal way, and it go, and for whatever reason they decide to search the entire plane and search it with, you know, there's no real built-in ways to hide things. We can drop things off in other places. Um, so we may want to wait to do that part. We, yeah, you know, we, we could do something where we had a special area where we set up shop that was kind of out of town, sort of as a base of operations, where we could probably get a few more things in. Otherwise, we may want to be pretty legal, legal about it. If you go into a major airport, filing legit flight plans and all that good stuff. I am not a smuggler, so I will defer to your knowledge. But so. perhaps moving toward the airport would be a way to go about this now. At least towards your hangar. Okay. Well, let's let's let our uh, esteemed Decker here. Uh, and I assume we've all introduced ourselves, hopefully at some point in the proceedings. Uh, get to work on doing some research. Please find out all you can about Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sir Sebastian Saul, Shaw, BT. Yep. So, um, what Stardust is going to do is, um, how much time do we have until we have to leave? Like... Do I have six hours to perform a search? A thorough search? She'll just kind of... I do not know how long this will take, but I am I have waited long, and a few more hours won't... a few more days won't make much difference. Okay, I'll get to my war room, and then I'll tell you what I can find. It shouldn't take too long. So, um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hop grids over to the London grid. CNET, if it's still called that. Alright. I'm back, sorry. You can roll Am this I any you can... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so used to doing it that way. Am I rolling <laughs> anything for... Um, am I taking a penalty for obscure information? Researching uh, him and his pets? Well, tell me exactly what you want to look into first, and I'll tell you what kind of search it's going to need to be. And exactly I want to do... Affecting you. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Fly on the Wall, browse Agent, and then do um, a quick rating three search on him, generally his estate, any like semi-relevant information, and then mm -hmm. I'll start looking for hidden shit. So, uh, Yeah, that would be a threshold three. Uh, okay. Not because... It's, yeah, it's not hidden or anything, but it's not necessarily publicized. Uh, super, yeah. Is this information intricate or obscure? Not really, no. Okay. So it He's takes quite like a, a, a colorful guy. He's quite a. You get to keep eight of those or nine okay. of those, so it takes like literally a second. <laughs> right here. Uh, so yes, uh, Sir Sebastian Shaw. Um, he's a very, 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 very rich, prevalent, uh, British old money aristocrat. Okay. Um, living in London. 
uh, who is most well known for um, purchasing Kenwood House from the uh, from the United uh, from the UK government uh, back in like the late twenties when uh, when governments were starting to become obsolete. Uh, Kenwood House used to be this uh, public sort of gallery uh, where people could uh, could come and, and and look around the mansion and it was kind of uh, an earner for the government. It was this fantastic mansion. Um, but they sold it off to, to rich people. Um, I suppose actually it probably would have been his father uh, who, who purchased it. Uh, but he is known for occupying it now. Um, he's known for being a bit of an eccentric, uh, a bit of a traveller. Um, he's known for being a collector. Um, he he spends a lot of his time uh, travelling around, and when he's not spending huge amounts of money um, funding various government factions uh, to maintain his status, uh, he tends to be buying things of particular extravagance and uh, value to a collector. Uh, if you want to know anything more specific, uh, go ahead and ask. And I'll. Oh, sorry. I was muted. Interesting. Does he have any corporate connections? Uh, not really. He, he seems to be the kind of guy who, um, who just gives money to whoever's in power or whoever's likely to be in power. Um, he just throws, throws money around like it's nothing because it is nothing to him. Um, so lots of donations to various corporations and various government factions, the, the new druidic movement he used to fund the office of the lord protector before he got ousted um yeah he he's he's giving money to a lot of different people so no specific corporate connections he's he's given significant donations to as technology to fuchi uh to to quite a few okay does he have any pulley club or uh criminal or connections um, nothing that you're digging up here, though he is an old white British man who's very rich, so you can assume, uh, kind of intuitively that he's probably not much of a, a matter human lover, but that, that's not a guarantee, yeah. but that, that is like the kind of average, um, perception of these kinds of people in, in, in the UK, especially. Okay. He's a pensioner and a monster. Okay. <laughs> um yeah i'm okay with kaz killing him um now er okay so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do i assume i found nothing on his pets or actual things he has collected um know, like Fabergé eggs or anything not with not with that level of search unfortunately it's just not it's it's not even not publicized it's just kind of like it's never. It, it's a private auction, so. It's been actively hit. Hun, actively it would be. Hidden it would race. be hidden information. Yeah. All right. So that's what's going to be coming next. Okay. Um, still on psych. Used to having gene infusions. Oh well. And this is going to be writing. Um, Is this obscure or intricate? Um, I would call this specialized. So I'm Not at a minus two? two? Minus one. A minus one, okay. Jesus. Nice. So instead of six hours, um, divided by four, six hours divided by four is... One and a half hours. Okay. That was fast. So yeah, maybe because you you know where you're looking, uh, you you managed to find the information uh, relatively quickly by huge data dive standards. Um, 
yeah, it pretty much matches up with what what Casa has told you. Um, he was he wasn't recently he wasn't personally at the auction in Seattle, but one of his his many minions, who presumably just goes out and bids on his behalf, uh, did purchase. Um, uh, what is a mountain lion? Is that correct, Rob? Yep. I had you down as a snow leopard. My bad. Um, Wrong cat girl. Yeah. So, uh, so yes. Um, you you know Anything that this at- this guy picked up uh, a mountain lion from from the auction in Seattle and pretty much brought them right back to to London. Well, I was trusting and ver- but verifying that. What I was more interested, though, is does he have any other paracreditors, museum pieces? Um... Yes. Um, his collections span uh, uh, a great deal of, of art, both old and new. Uh, so paintings, uh, books, things like, you know, like old, old books, um, artifacts, things that are rumored to be of, of great magical import, though. Nobody's really confirmed whether that's uh, true or not. Um, he collects a lot of exotic animals, so he's rumored to have. Uh, well, not rumored. With with this search, you you can pretty much find I mean, that someone yeah, has he's... to pay the vet. Someone has to pay the paracritter vet, and yeah. yeah, he's he's got a great deal of uh, of paracritters and just exotic mundane animals in general. Uh, you know he has on staff uh, a fairly I don't want to say famous but a fairly well reputed um, paranormal uh, paracritter expert called Jewel Duval okay. uh, who, who is a, a French paracritter expert uh, she seems to be kind of permanently on staff with him to take care of these these critters okay um, I assume I'm getting some specifics. Do you have any, or do you have any specifics for the paracritters that he has, or a greatest hits at least of things that we should know about? Like, he doesn't have a behemoth in a giant tank, does he? Uh, no, it's it's nothing quite that extreme. Uh, it's mostly just various um, variants of uh, awakened apes, for example. Uh, a number of um, of big cats, though he seems to get rid of them or sell them off when they stop being, you know, cub cute. Um, okay. so it's, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a wide, wide plethora. Nothing that's like hugely dangerous, really. Okay. So um, no Bargas, he doesn't, no. cause he would have to have licenses if he had things like Bargasts or I don't know. Hellhounds. Yeah. He, he doesn't seem to have anything like that in okay. his exotic animals collection. Okay. Uh, which he kind of. What's the priciest artifact that he has? Oh, the the priciest artifact. Yeah. Uh, his his artifact collection is rumored to uh, be up in the hundreds of, of thousands of yen. Okay, uh, and I've for a, a single piece. And I've got at least pictures or descriptions, so I know what to look for when we're stealing shit. Uh, there's there's a number of. Uh, there's a number of descriptions of people who have have been in the house, but he largely keeps that. Uh, like, no one's really allowed to go in there and take pictures of the stuff. Okay. Uh, but there's descriptions of various things like urns and uh, uh, a foot from some mysterious creature that's never been uh, identified and stuff like that. Man, I wish I worked for the Atlantean Foundation. Okay. Cool. You can, <laughs> you can after this mission if you bring them. The all Atlantean fi- does the Atlantean Foundation have offices in London? Because I know they buy artifacts. No questions asked. Um, uh, I, I don't American think. Office. Yeah, I don't think they have an office in London, but they probably have some presence there, like connections and and whatnot. But maybe not an actual uh, ground presence in terms of like a fixed position. We can just stop by Miami and sell them at the uh, sell them there because there's a huge Atlantean Foundation office there. They ask no questions asked; they'll just buy it. Okay. Uh, seeing as I've got a little more time, because um, I was given just 
First of all, what, I'm going to load a baby monitor. What's my uh, um, Overwatch score? That is an excellent question, and something I have definitely been calculating. Uh, it's 26 it, per, it's, it's per, 26 minutes, per half hour. It? Oh, per half hour. Oh, do you have the thingy? The fly yeah, on the wall. Fly on the wall. That's right, that's right. I mentioned I had fly on the wall up. Allow me to roll this. Uh, 11. So on, I jumped grids. Yeah, jumping grids will start your your Overwatch. Was there anything else you wanted to know? I'm oh, sorry, what was my OS? I couldn't hear you. 11. 11? Yeah. Um... Let me just do some math. There's no reason not to reboot. I'll reboot, hop back on to the London grid. Mm -hmm. um, of course, save all this information in the file and distribute copies of it to my friends. Okay. Um, and um, once I've done that, I'm going to perform a... I assume with my rating... I'm going to perform a rating six search, assuming I didn't already have this information, seeing what security contractors he's ha hired. Because mm -hmm. I assume he doesn't have a massive collection of priceless artifacts and exotic creatures that is unguarded. I think that would be a safe bet. Uh, now, so how long does that take you? Well, what depth of a search would you say that information is? Uh, that's definitely going to be, yeah, hidden. Okay. And I assume this isn't intricate or some or anything, right? Um, yeah, I don't. I, I don't know. I think it would be specialized. So minus All one right. again. Let's hope I roll fucking amazing this time too. Wow! I hope I roll this well uh, during the actual run. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the same three, uh, hour and a half. That's the, yep. That's no. This is going to be um, divided by two. Six divided by two is three hours. Oh, okay. Um, I don't believe it's... Even if you rolled um, all six, I couldn't converge in that time, so... Okay. To my knowledge. Um, so it looks like, after you do some digging, uh, that uh, he is... He does have a contract. Because there's no, there's no, no real knight errant or... Uh, Lone Star equivalent over there. They just kind of have a police force. Um, they do have some corporate security presence. Um, he seems to have some kind of contract with uh, as technology over there. Um, okay. Probably because they have a very significant um, surveillance um, business over there. So they're 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 likely in charge of uh, of his security from kind of a cameras and uh, ground forces kind of perspective. All right. Um, seeing as I've got a... I'm going to make one more... Ma so I wasn't able to get the specifics of what what he ordered, just that he has a contract with AS Technology and they handle his security? Yeah. Okay. Um... If I went to the AS Technology grid, could I hypothetically find the specifics? Um, would I have I to crack an AS Technology host? Yeah, I think that would likely... Uh, that, that kind of specific information would be on some kind of security host. Okay, am I able with this search to find out which host that information would be on? Uh, I suppose so. Okay. Um, I forget the exact name of the, uh, the AS Technology corporation over there i'll i'll try and look it up um but seeing as this is sort of their main london hq it is going to be a significant uh a significant matrix presence as long as you're okay with that um well what's significant performing matrix perception on it
raiding, um, firewall, and attack. Oh, he's starting to that. Sorry. Quite all right. Uh, so, uh, as Technologies London HQ, where they have an enormous uh, security state presence, is going to be uh, a rating eight host. Okay. Uh, firewall is going to be uh, eleven. And what was the other thing you wanted? Attack. Uh, attack is going to be eight. Okay. Uh, sorry, nine. Nine? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm not cracking that anytime soon. Um, if we have a specific... If it comes down to it and I've got a team around me to get me out of there, if I'm taking brain damage, maybe. But that's not a decision I make by myself. So I'm going to forward all the information I've collected thus far and then go to meet... Um, with Cotton when he's ready for us to transport. On the way going there, I'm going to have my agent perform a search uh, limited interest level on the Jewel Woman. Okay. What, what did and I miss about the Jewel Woman? Who is the Jewel Woman? He's, um, I assume it's a woman. Yes. Um, his, that's the name of his uh, paracritter specialist. And I'm not sure why I GM rolled that. But it takes um, not enough time for me to even build any OS. I'm guessing you've rebooted after... Or, no, you're just after doing this, this and then rebooting. Yeah. Did um, you find out if he had any family? Or anyone close to him? I assume that would have been covered in the in, in the initial search, yeah? Yeah, that, that would have been readily available. Um, he, he does have a family. He has a wife. Uh, and children, though his children are adults and are, you know, off being traveling philanthropists. Okay. Uh. okay. Well, I'll forward that information as well if Casa wants some blood vengeance or if we need some leverage. And I'll reboot. Um, uh, so you want the other information just going on in the background with my agent, but they're less okay. important. Uh, you wanted information on Jewel? Yes. Uh, yes. So, she is a fairly prolific name in the world of Paracritters. Uh, she is uh, prominently a centaur uh, who uh, has kind of made uh, a bit of a name for herself, uh, particularly over in France, um, writing a number of uh, theoretical theses on uh, Paracritic care um, and you know kind of you new uh, techniques on on how to how to train them how to care for them how to deal with them in a humane way that isn't just uh, crush them into submission until they do what you want as a lot of corporations tend to do um, and yes yeah, she seems to be uh, on Sir Sebastian's payroll at the moment, taking care of presumably a great number of, of paracritters he has. Uh, Seeing this is in from... I should have asked this about uh, Lord of the Manor himself, but I'll ask it here. Um, seeing as this is information that would be on an ordinary sin check, does she have a license for any spells or foci? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. No. No, she doesn't. Okay. Uh, though she's a centaur, so there is some magic that's going to be involved. Uh, yep. But, yeah. She hasn't, at least legally, had any magical training in mm -hmm. that area. Doesn't mean he can't, she's not an adept and he hasn't bought her some super expensive foci off the black market, because that seems like the kind of thing he would do. <laughs> He's not awakened as far as I could tell, is he? No, not that you could tell. This seems uh, this hoarding of knowledge seems awfully hermetic-y. Oh. I'll relay all of this uh, through my encrypted files to the rest of my team. Okay, so this guy lives in a virtual fortress in one of the most built-up 
and secure areas of the planet. In a different country, by the way. It's for a good cause. Uh, yes. Okay. Is there any way to get this guy out of the house? Do what I want to do. I am going to use. I have knowledge of smuggling, so I'm going to think about the general process used when one wants to uh, make a trade with someone else, like you know, black market kind of stuff. Does do they usually meet on neutral court? Is it everybody shows up to the rich guy's house? Basically, what's the what's the procedure for that? For like trading with this guy. You mean? Yes, like basically, if I were to call this guy up and say, "Hi, I have some shit you would like," uh, what is standard operating procedure? Is it do, do most people show up to that guy's house? Is it meet on neutral ground? You know, I don't know what my character might. Okay, okay. Do you have a, a knowledge skill uh, to roll? I got smuggling. Uh, and, yeah, that's not really it. It might be anything to do with sort of like high society. Um, or uh, kind of black market underworld, that sort of thing. Oh, I got syndicates. Uh, I do have parazoology for his worth. Um, I mean, That's you kind right. of. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think. Yeah. You, could, okay. you can get a general idea of like how people tend to purchase these, but you already know that he gets them from an auction, for example. Oh, sure. uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. So this guy has a fortress. Does anyone have a plan on uh, maybe getting him out of that fortress? Does he ever leave? Would that even be a, a place to hit him? Because even if we do catch him when he's not in his, you know, fortress of solitude, our target is not will not be with him. So there's only so much leverage we have. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I don't think we need to go too loud on this because I don't think we would get out of London. So, if you look at the, if you look at a map, you know, I, I don't know if this is meta gaming or not, Jim. I pulled up a map of the place on Google Earth. Um, oh, I can give you a map of. Uh... Oh, okay. Of London, and the the uh, estate is what somewhere like in this shop over here. Yes, exactly that. It's in Hampstead. Yeah, there's a. If you look at it, there's a giant field. I mean, this place is just surrounded by open fields and trees and other pretty crap. It wouldn't be that hard to you know jump over a hedgerow or a wall. And, you know, be in a fairly remote area where there's not a whole lot of eyes. And we could sneak up, up to and around the house. Um, there would no doubt be some guards there. Well, probably, maybe. And we would have to avoid detection from them. <sighs> but I, I don't know anything beyond that. Like, you know, we're there. We get access to the house. We find this guy. We find the target. We leave and, and drive away. Does anyone have any cool ideas for any part of this plan? Um, well, I'm not sure how cool this idea is, but I would love to do some astro scouting from Seattle before we even. We should do that. Possible. Well, it is. Oh, it's yeah. Just, yeah, it's fast. You you move at the speed of thought, right? So. Right. Yeah. You you. Sp- Move basically at the speed of light in the astral, right? It's like 10, like when you're traveling long distance, it's like 10 kilometers a combat turn. So crossing the world doesn't take very long. Yeah, yeah. So um, that is ex- awaken people out of concerts. I guess words. <laughs> okay, but well just keep in mind if you're floating around, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of activity going around there anyway, but don't make it too obvious that there's a hit coming in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't get caught staring I mean, at the guy's bathroom, you know. Obviously. And that's, and yeah, and yeah, there's probably going to be 11 billion wards there, you know. So right, I don't want that. But the, I, I want to know is. what the wards are and whether they exist, and you know, and okay. basically get a feel of the uh, 
exterior before we even leave the country. Cool. So I find a nice, comfortable place on my couch, and I pass. Actually, first, first, um, no. We can do that later. I find a nice, comfortable place on my couch, and I pass out and go into the astral. Okay. You float above your body uh, in this, frankly, dingy uh, apartment. There's a plant pot looking at you on the astral. Mm -hmm. Wait, I thought I was, yeah, I was going to go back to my apartment before I do this. Oh, my bad. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you all left. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah. I don't got to be paying attention. What am I? It, what are you, the GM? Exactly. My job is just to kill you all. I don't have to yeah. worry about details. So you go back to your apartment, you float out of your body, uh, and you're just going to try to what go that uh, way. Looks like it's east. I'll fly that way. Well, fly that way until I hit a landmass um, that vaguely looks like uh, Great Britain, and then fly until I basically hit uh, something that looks like uh, London. Okay. Um, do you want to roll me navigation? I would love to roll you navigation. Just look for, you know, the drab astral space in Big Ben. Uh, why don't you make that an extended check for me? All right. I refuse to roll the 1d6. Are you sure? I do not want a crit glitch on the yeah. last bit of <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you kind of go zipping off at the speed of light across the sea, and it's it's kind of difficult because it's actually not so easy to identify a landmass, especially from the astral, um, because mm -hmm. it's like it's all just kind of this mundane blur and as you're zipping through you're kind of encountering all of this paranormal interference uh, along the way so without any kind of guide you're kind of zipping around uh, ah. looking ah. looking lost idea 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 okay well, I am oh, this is this is gonna be this is going to be great. I am going to um, try and summon a spirit of air to guide me. Okay. Yes, I know I will be taking physical drain uh, for doing this. Uh, what force are you going for? I am going to go for a force. Um, why not? Let's go with a force. Um, four. It's going to actually summon as a force five. Okay. Uh, limit is four. Um, roll five dice, please. Tell me what to do. There you go. I take one physical. Okie dokie. And I will... Um, spirit of air. Uh, one second, let me check the optional powers. It doesn't really matter, but... Um, my one... The one service I am basically concerned with is uh, asking it through my various means of asking it, uh, to guide me to, um, to London. 
Uh, yeah. The spirit, the spirit looks at you and says, "What's London?" It. Oh, oh, okay. Using knowledge of history, um, I am going to describe London as one of um, one of those tell cities him to take that. You to take you, tell him to take you. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of those places that ancestors uh, would have uh, raided uh, long ago. Uh, I will describe its geography in detail um or the geographical location of london of where it is in the world in detail mm -hmm. so you just try and give it as as thorough uh a description an explanation as you can. yes it's this polluted husk that's <laughs> just uh a complete mess and it's surrounded by toxic spirits everywhere uh and it's a horrible place for spirits basically um um i thought we were talking about london that is london <laughs> i know i know i the smoke as it's called uh it'll it'll think for a while uh and it will take you to a number of places that match that description okay. um Eventually, yes, you you get to a place that that you're pretty sure is is London. You can't really read any of the signs, but of course. Uh, um, where was the what what region of the uh, city was the uh... the house? Yes, uh, in Hampstead, uh, which is in the village. If you see me pinging there. Mm hmm. Um. Okay. How well can I orient myself? South, north, east, west. Um, again, it's kind of difficult. On is, the is the sun on the astral? Not really. No. No. There isn't light on the astral. It's just auras and well, shadows sure. of the mundane world. There's the River Thames, right? Yeah, the Thames is there. Yeah, I, I will orient myself using uh, the River Thames. Okay. Um... And go for the direction that looks to be uh, the village. So you see a number of, of uh, free water spirits kind of inhabiting uh, the Thames as you sail over. Um, and yeah, give me another navigation. Okay, it was a bit easier this time. You managed to navigate yourself and work your way over. Um, in Hampstead, there are a large number of uh, of these these mansions. Um, the way the way the village is, as it's kind of this idyllic false paradise that these guys, these these rich sons of bitches, have uh, constructed for themselves. Uh, which allows them to live as if they're in the countryside, uh, despite being really not that far from, uh, you know, industrial civilization. Uh -huh. So it's this kind of wonderful, non-polluted paradise oasis in the middle of it all. Um, and you see a number of buildings. Um, in terms of the actual building you're looking for, uh -huh. it's... It's a little, a little sketchy. Did we get a visual of the building that I can describe to my friendly uh, spirit to search for, possibly? Uh, I suppose you would have got uh, an image of of Kenwood, uh, uh, Kenwood House uh, back when it was being uh, kind of a public public display mm -hmm. um if i cannot find it i will um use another service and ask the spirit to search for it and uh, guide me over okay 
Uh, the spirit is going to, yeah, zip you on, on over to to Kenwood House. Um, yeah, uh, so you're pretty sure you found it. It's uh, it's this uh, rather opulent uh, space uh, with this. Well, from what you can see, it's just this towering shadow that has these. It's almost like the mansion itself has an aura. Um, like it's been here for so long. Uh-huh. Um, there's quite a pleasant, you know, happy, uh, happy uh, aura about it. Like this is some a, a place that a lot of people um, relate to pleasant experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh... There's a large number of auras walking around in the very spacious gardens uh, around the building. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, first order of business is to assess the area. I am looking for spirits and words mostly. Okay. Am I in a back? Uh, am I in a background count? Um, you are going to be in a negative one background count. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, um, so you're looking for wards and spirits. Uh, you, yeah, you don't see any spirits. You don't see any wards. Fascinating. Uh, on the outside of the building. No spirits. No wards on the outside of the building. Um, we got a visual of the building, give or take. Right. Where was that link? I'm not sure what you're looking for. Um, just generally what it looks like. Um, oh yeah, I'll give you a. I'll flip you over to another thing here. The images oh, you saw looked something like this. Okay. Um, and I didn't see a ward in, at all, and no wards. Nope. That's a kick-ass mm-hmm. picture, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. I made it myself. Uh-huh. I feel like that's not true. You're doubting me? <laughs> yeah, you could have made it yourself. You could have just cropped it and then you would have made it, right? Yeah. This is mine yeah. now. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, that is fascinating. Um, well, one possible option is to go in through, say the roof and see whether or not I, um, once in there, I see a ward or even if the ward intersects with, um, with the walls. So I am going to see if I can even push a part of myself through the roof of the building. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. certainly can. There's nothing nothing stopping you uh and you will emerge in a uh in an attic kind of a very spacious attic uh again it's on the astral it's just kind of this mundane lump of a place uh mm-hmm. doesn't seem like people go up here very often right um I am going to a sense again. I am looking for a ward on the inside now. Uh, in the attic, or are you moving around the house? Uh, in the attic, um, seeing if you know it, it's like a shell within the house. Okay. Do I see a ward? Uh, no. I push a foot through the floor. There's nothing stopping you. Fascinating. I will poke my head in, and um, assuming that I can do so, I will try not to stick around too much longer. 
Uh, yeah, so you you head down to the next floor. Um, this is a well. There's a basement, a, f- uh, a first floor, a second floor, and the attic. So now you're on the second floor. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. And coming down from the attic, um, uh, you're about you're you're about yeah in the loft space. So um, yeah, you you come down into this uh, into this basically like a corridor. Uh, mm-hmm. With with a number of different rooms uh, all around, um, make me a reaction plus intuition check. Reaction plus intuition check. Um, okay. Uh, would I not be rolling inst- uh, first? Wait, reaction plus intuition. Wouldn't that be intuition times two here? Yeah, I suppose it would. Uh, also, would I not um, first roll to see? Whether or not I'm spotted. No, go ahead and roll the, uh, just roll the the times two. Okay. I am definitely not satisfied. I will edge it. Okay. Okay. So you you manage to turn and you see uh, a rather portly maid. Uh, carrying something kind of bustling towards you uh, as and you manage to just like nimbly hop out of the way before she she passes passes through you and gets the the heebie-jeebies uh, and you, you become aware that these halls are just alive with servants people rushing about uh, uh-huh. all the time it's it's a very populated populated okay. house uh, I will yes I will uh you know, send my astral floor basically to the upper reaches of the floor. I will, you know, like floating just below the ceiling. Mm-hmm. I will ascend the area. Um, again, looking for spirits, looking for wards. Mm-hmm. Still the same background count? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see no spirits and you see no wards. Okay. With that in mind, I leave the mansion uh, again through the roof. I will use um, a last service on the spirit to guide me back to my body, um, describing where it is in uh, great vivid detail. The spirit seems a little annoyed that it's having to like travel across the entire world, but it's like, okay, and, and I will pushes you along, mm-hmm. and I will thank it profusely after it is done doing so. Um, uh, and telling it if there is anything I can do in return uh, to please. Um, Uh, the spirit's just going to say, I'm just going to go now, okay? Okay. Okay. Bye. Mm-hmm. And it poofs into into oblivion. Yes. Um, so I re-answer my body, and I relay the information that I have gotten from my scouting, chiefly that I did not notice any wards protecting this place. silence there was no war protecting this place okay no why was I able to find any to answer OG's question Will was I able to find any matrix security licenses or anything that they'd uh, Uh, yes in fact I I was in the middle of typing that to you um, but then I got distracted Um, do you want me to I'll just say it out loud right I don't see this okay Either way, um, I'm going to have to type it down into my notes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yes, the the Rigoron staff has the uh, Vulcan Liege Lord. Okay. Um, and he has uh, licenses for the Cyberspace Designs Dalmatian and the Steel Lynx. <gasps> Those are scary. 
Okay, these are not just some ferrets working their way through the garden. Those are some drones. Okay. Uh, as for the guards, you're not... Ri in the UK, your guards... Unless you're, like, guarding the Queen uh, or other, you know... Uh, right, you know, a SWAT police force or something. You're not really supposed to be carrying around automatic weapons, and countries tend to be pretty cautious of letting corporations walk around with huge armaments in their countries because they tend to just take them over. Yeah. Um, so well, they can do that on their own, on their own corporate extraterritorial ground. This isn't though, right? This is an extraterritorial ground, no. But okay. there have been times in the Sixth World historically where a corporation has just come in and been like, hey guys, we're here to help. And then they've just taken over the country. Um, yeah. Everywhere. In Africa, a lot of times, yeah. yeah. No, like California State really is a good example in a way. I know it's Japan doing it, but still, close enough. Mm. Um, and in any case, uh, armaments are a lot more restricted. So the, the guards, in terms of restricted arms, uh, they mostly just have uh, light pistol and heavy pistol licenses. Nothing super serious. I figured that they would at least have to have those weapons licensed. And there's no combat spells that they've had to license or manipulation spells, because I know those are restricted. Uh, nope. Okay. So I will transmit all this information to my colleagues. Um, the links in the Dalmatian, I mean, those are serious uh, physical threats, but I should be able... I, I can handle a liege lord in the Matrix. Do you know what those drones are carrying? Um, let me ask you this. Can you legally mount um, lethal weapons to drones like you can in the CAS here? Or do you have to limit yourself to LTL? Uh, you're in the UK, you mean? Yeah, in the UK. Yeah, so... It pretty much follows the same rules. You're not going to have drones that are legally uh, allowed Mount to carry, uh, you know, huge, heavy, you know, Ares Alphas and stuff like that. Right. Are you allowed? To, are you allowed to legally own cat people? Uh, yeah. <laughs> apparently. Oh, wow. Well, shit. Okay. Slavery is apparently in style over there in uh, Sir Sebastian's manor house. Well, um, cats aren't people. Is, exactly. Is There's the, no moral ambiguity yeah, the, here. Well, yeah, I know that lethal weapons are generally illegal on security drones, but there's ways to skirt around that. Do they have licenses for weapons mounted on these drones? No. Uh, they don't have any licenses regarding, except for the actual drones themselves, um, which probably means either they have things like tasers, or you know, they have an illegal weapon mounted and they're just not telling anyone. Yeah, no, officer. The Shadowrunners broke in and left this gun behind and then shot each other with it. Crazy okay. Shadowrunners, right? Who knows what they're willing to do? Yeah. Probably on drugs yeah. anyway. I mean, if you're rich enough. So those, both those. <laughs> the Lynx comes with a weapon mount. The Dalmatian doesn't, but. Jeez. Okay. So I do not know what gun they have mounted on that thing. I have an idea. Just, just a quick little aside. I'm gonna, uh, Casa. Mm -hmm. How would you like to uh, play a little quick game uh, that would help me learn something possibly very important? Um, I'm gonna turn around, mm -hmm. and I want you to turn to that cat thing again, and I want you to gently tap me on the shoulder by sneaking up on me. And I can't hear you, and I can't see you. If I see you, and I call, and I. If if you move and I call you out, you lose. Does that make sense? She's gonna raise an eyebrow. She's very clearly confused. Claws, claws in. No, no claws, claws in. out. Not in me. In, no, that's not <laughs> very specific. The claws are in you. They stay there. She think will me. roll her eyes as you treat her like an idiot. But then she will uh, go into the other room to get out of uh, her people clothes. And then come back in as a as a mountain lion. Okay. And then I assume you turn around. Yes, I'm turning around. Right. I'm sensing the air. I am focusing very hard on you sticking up on me. Give me your best shot. Alright. Alright. 
Okay. Do I get any, do I get a bonus for listening very very hard? Like you get like a plus one for something like taking stock of the area or something. I don't know. That is kind of up to Will, but she is going to float off of the ground so that she is not touching anything, and then just float on next to you. Generally, there's a plus three to observe in detail. Okay, I'll take that. So, I do not... So you levitated. Oh, you suck so much. <laughs> okay, I, presumably you touch my shoulder, I turn around. Are you a floating cat in midair? Yes. Okay, that's not, that's not what I meant. That's not what I wanted you to do. The head okay. kind of does that dog thing where it turns <laughs> think, sideways. You know what? You know what? That's I, fine. That's fine. I, You're that's a floating proof cat. That's concept right there. What? <laughs> it's very, that's very impressive, Kaza. I would reach forward and like pet. I'm like, mm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. That's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, no. <laughs> like, I'll just, just want to see. It may come in useful for the uh, the upcoming mission. She will. Uh... <laughs> um... So much racism happening in the. In the <laughs> She does not have empty boxes. She has a pile of clothes that she probably sleeps on, and that's about it. And it's not like um, like armored runner clothes, just like a pile of stuff like that. Man, there's just so much racism going on here. Holy shit! We need a la- we need- Luckily, my weapon has a laser pointer. If you try a double cross. <laughs> <laughs> But she will, uh, she will land and then pad off to get dressed. Probably coming back out in the bathrobe because clearly you're doing some weird stuff. He's cotton satisfied with his test. Sure. I, I'm, yeah, why not? <laughs> That, that, sure. Yes. Okay. Does he look as perplexed as you sound right now? Yep. Like, so, so, what, what would I expect? You know? I do not know. What did you expect? <laughs> For the cat to sneak up on me in a physical plane type of way. So she's just going to kind of look to see if... Because I think Ogie is still here, and it's just like... Is that what I should have done? Yep. I I, th- I think he wanted you to do it by walking, but here we are. I'm fine with this. One way or the other, you prove this. you can get behind a man without him noticing you. Yeah. Um. I have a couple of other capabilities to to hunt my my prey most of them rely more upon the mystical arts rather than physical capabilities for example and then she's gonna uh, cast something upon cotton <laughs> what ha- what happened <laughs> are you uh, trying to turn me into a cat <laughs> do not turn me into a cat so cotton is not making any sound Oh god, my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Do, am I aware I'm not making any sound? Am I just like mouthing, mouthing out? Um, so let me look over the spell real quick. It, it, yeah, it eliminates the sound. You are aware that you are not making any sound. Like um, if you walk around, your footsteps won't make sound. If you like knock on the wall, it won't make sound. Could fire a gun off and it wouldn't make any sound. I believe is how powerful it is, right? Yeah, Actually. you you can you can resist the spell, um, but yeah, basically. The gun roll object resistance then? I'm just I'm just no, like you, out every a person would demand. a person would have to resist it to hear what was going on in there. For it is an illusion spell. Yes. Okay, it's not physically suppressing it. It's mental. Okay, it's a mana spell, not a physical one. Right. Uh, no, it is a physical spell. Oh, it okay. It is realistic, single sense. 
but then she will, after seeing Cotton stress for a moment, she will drop the spell from him. <sighs> okay. Well, that's that's very that's very neat, Castle. That's very cool. Okay. I'm gonna collect myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting day for Cotton. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. Okay, she true. turns into a cat. That's weird. Cat, cat can fly. That's that's odd. But my worldview accepts flying cat. Cat can take away my voice. Okay, now, slow down. Cat got your tongue. Oh. oh. God damn hey. It. God damn it. Oh, that was awful. Uh, so bad. Uh, punish him. <laughs> so, uh, sure status. Uh, status. You wanted to do a search on his staff. I'm guessing that means like his servants and stuff. Yep. And I'm doing that on the normal grid from AR with my agent doing it. Like, okay. That's just my agent doing that shit in the background. Well, it got a large number of hits, and it's yeah, it's going to be fairly, fairly accessible information. Um. Yeah, you know he has a a very large staff uh, of servants uh, who range from gardeners to cleaners. Um, They all live in the mansion, uh, in the servants' quarters, um, and are... Sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, And, yeah, uh, they're quite loyal um, and private. Uh, now you're yeah, through a private service, or does he do all of his hiring himself through his estate? The latter, yeah, the latter. For the people who are taking care of his his place, he he wants them to be trusted, especially as you know they're wandering around his his very expensive home. The check would be for this, but looking at his number of staff, like I guess I could do it with the equivalent of a Google search. Does he have enough staff to maintain a manor of this size, or does it look like he ha- he doesn't have enough and he's relying on drone support? Um, he yeah, has yeah he around? he has um a servant staff that is is enough to to handle a mansion of this size. Um, okay. it seems like yeah he's not so much uh maybe he's a bit old fashioned that way uh, on account of being like fucking eighty years old. But he he doesn't maybe he doesn't trust drones as much. But yeah, it's not so much drones for cleanliness. He has the people uh, taking care man of servant, that. His man servants don't have the Renraku logo on them. Got it. Precisely. Wait, he's like eighty years old. Uh, he's pretty old. I haven't actually calculated a, an actual okay. age for him, but he's he's really old. Yeah, he's 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 an elderly man. No, oh, I just. It's even better now. I'm just culling the herd. Yeah, he'll be all people are super easy to kill, like babies. Uh, anyway, so we've been going for uh, about an hour and three quarters. So um, I would like to start making a move to getting to London, uh, but I'll call a break. Do you guys want five minutes or ten minutes? I'm cool with either. I'm good with either doesn't matter to me okay uh well unless someone screams 10 minutes now uh, I'll, I'll call it five um so if we meet back at uh 54 minutes past the hour um and then i'd like to start making a move towards uh getting to london okay. um okay so I'll, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit